Greetings and salutations, everybody. This is Topaz, and today I decided to put together a collection of glitches, exploits, and just rock physics that I managed to figure out while playing the demo of an excellent game. I streamed all these attempts on my Twitch channel, uh, Ghost in the Ishi, and today we'll be showcasing all three days, starting with Rango. We'll start out on the beach, and we'll be exploring a little bit of the open area. So the starting area doesn't have much to go over. However, I was trying to make this jump. Due to the nature of the wall, it prevents you from safely landing on the other side. However, we'll find out later that it is possible to actually make it. It is now nighttime and we had walked around the map to try to figure out any kind of way to get out of bounds, and we couldn't. However, if you just noticed, the crab came in contact with the boulder and sent it flying. So, I used the magical power of the X button in order to grab the rock and bring it to my side. I tried using it on that wall and then quickly realized that I could just go up here and simply have a safer area and make sure to not accidentally toss it into the water like I had a couple of times. And so there we are. Uh, with the help of the crab this time, we are now effectively in a zone we're not supposed to be in, and this allows us to do two things which was really significant because this was the first attempt. Not only do I get a cassette tape, aka a capture device, but two, this allows us to break the sequence of the game by being able to enter battle with the ability to collect a monster for ourselves. We do check out this building for a second, but you can't go in, and you even get some unique dialogue for being somewhere you're not supposed to be. As you can see, when we're jumping on the rock, there are places that we're not going to be able to go to. For instance, that wall had an invisible barrier, so we're not able to go past it and there's going to be several of those all over the place. However, regular NPCs are still designed to do what they're supposed to do. So he'll give us the pencil, aka the rewind item, to fully heal. Here we can go on top, but we will find an invisible barrier as well. Some locations with the invisible barriers have ledges you can stand on. However, a lot of places do not. For instance, right here. So we're gonna basically break a sequence in the game by triggering the creature to come forward when we're supposed to do that later with our companion with us. It will allow the battle to start and our companion is with us automatically by default with her own cassette but obviously we don't have ours. We set it up so that we could record this creature although I don't think it really mattered which one we've gotten. In this circumstance Recording. I managed to record and she's the only one who can do anything. And even after taking damage and lowering it to 59, we did fortunately get lucky in order to get a cassette tape. We did the final blow, and as you can see in the experience log, not only do we have the cassette tape, but it automatically gets experience. Continuing to check for walls, we also see that on the north side, you can't actually progress any further than you're supposed to. To the left as well. We're gonna go ahead and continue left where the glide spot is when you're supposed to collect the creature and get your own gliding wings and your quote-unquote stamina bar and not only turn on the jet stream but we're gonna go ahead and try to mess with the walls here as well although of course that's going to fail because here it also has the invisible barrier a uh, little bit of a ledge there, but then up above does not have a ledge. So check this out. You get one piece of dialogue, if of course you recognize this cutscene from the demo. And this does spawn in the building and everything acts like normal, even though I don't have her. But we simply approach the building again, same dialogue, 
Same cutscene, but the building doesn't go up. It simply just does the rising effect and the ground breaking. Oh yeah. You can also just trigger this at any point by jumping up and down too. Huh? A little bit of dialogue here in the train section, and then we just progress forward, trying to mess with the metal pieces since they use real physics. Go around the corner in order to grab the item, and then we're gonna go over and see if the cutscene still plays normally, which it doesn't. It'll drag us over like it's going to trigger, and you can even see, even without getting the glider, we still have the stamina and the glider for cutscene purposes. You can see that there's an interactable icon there for the creature that's supposed to spawn in, even though technically you never actually interact with it. And then if you ever wondered what was on the other sides of the train tracks, it's just a loop. You just go back and forth. So we decide to leave, and then we end up finding out real early that if flung by a rock, the player character can crack the giant barricade boulders. Yeah, and you can go in that tunnel. It turns out that it goes into a unique area. Now, I imagine this is something you'd be doing as you were leaving, but I managed to get in there just right and got to check out this area. And then, of course, I had to mess with the location to see if I could do anything with the water. And I was able to pull this off, not once, but twice. In this area, you can soft lock yourself in a constantly respawning position. Because essentially, the game doesn't understand where you're supposed to go, so it just keeps putting you back in the water. If you leave, you quickly find out that because you did the series of events backwards or you know out of order you can't leave this is actually another soft lock because you're physically incapable of getting to land now on day two I was trying to reach around the corner here but again I don't think there's enough height and momentum to do so can't get past the gate so I went back here to see if I could get the crab to throw the boulder and yeah I want you to look at that with me one time, okay? I jump, land, and for no reason, I float. So yeah, that was trippy. Then I go to check out the building again to see if I can get on top. And that's the first sign of the rock physics being a little funky. But yeah, you do need a key in order to get it. Moving on, we're going to make a small little point here. I know it's probably been clarified, but for some reason, while you're on the ride, your body acts like it's kind of stuck in the air until it starts going back down. And if you do all of this stuff out of sequence and camp, you camp alone. There is not a second tent. So it does actually render that there is not a second tent, even though it shows your companion with their tape and, of course, yours missing. And then... You're not allowed to progress the dungeon, which means progressing the story, without making sure that you have a cassette tape, which is pretty cool. Now, this is probably one of my favorite pieces for sure. Rock physics doing it again. The rock physics can thrust you under the map and cause a false gate to show up. False gate meaning that it's showing the, hey, you've completed the demo, but instead of booting you to the menu like that, you just dismiss it and you keep going. And there, there is two sets of false gates. There's the random ones that you can find, and then there's the true barrier around the entire map that you'll be able to see later. It basically forces the game to allow you to not progress anywhere, and it even flashes that image. And so, as you can see, because of the terrain being higher than where my camera and positioning is, I can't see very well, but tilting the camera allows me to kind of glitch and see underneath and stuff like that. Then once the terrain kind of dips down or gets lower, I'm able to see a bit more. So I decided to swim around and basically kind of go anywhere that I could. So I did the general area there and even showed you the beach. We'll get to that later. 
And then, of course, we're now submerged and underneath the city. Notice how the city music is not playing even though we're currently under it. So, it was a little bit later in the day, and I went left, and I ended up coming across a little bit more of this area. Now, I'll point it out a little bit more whenever I actually physically come here. We're going to head back to the city, and we're basically just going as far south as we can, triggering a mirror C subtitle to show it for the location that we're at. Then, if we go further right back to our original point, I'll show a small teaser of the location that uh, I will be going to later in the video. I did happen to save, and this is what the icon looks like for when I try to load back in. Anyway, I'll leave a brief window up in order to look at the map so that you can see all of the spots highlighted. We're moving on to day three, where I've created Xander, and I had skipped the majority of the beginning to showcase uh, the rest of my findings. For instance, like, if you manage to get the wings, that's your third option to get around that corner, because you can't necessarily when you pick up the wings, because she'll drag you to another spot. Then, we do a more exciting skip, where you're able to get on top of the skybox. This allows you to get to a few specific areas, for instance north, where you're able to interact with this small zone. It's a neat little area, but it is very boxed off. The only thing that we can do from here is just go south and check out the islands that I had shown slightly earlier. So, you're able to glide from here to go to these four spots, and when you step on the buttons, you can see the sign that pops up. I think it's just doing that because it's disabled at the time. Another example of physics being on your side. You play a character is thrown into the box, so you're able to access that early, which gives you a tape, which is really important for me, but also a really cool sticker. Then when we go back on top, we're going to go south in order to explore the back half of the town. This is a section that you're not supposed to reach because the lift is disabled, but you're able to go here and enter the top part of the town, which has a chest and a few other buildings with people to talk to. Alright, on to one of the bigger ones. We're going to use the physics in order to fly up into the air to go right this time on the uh, skybox. This will lead us into a little bit more of a desert area, and we're also going to experience something you're not supposed to have happen in the demo, which is experiencing a right. trainer battle. So their dialogue is obviously not correct, because it's not in the code, even though later you'll find out that some characters actually have dialogue. Oh, and no battle music too which I thought that was hilarious. We did win. <gasps> so we're gonna head north, because this is actually a pretty long stretch that you can go north to more fields and then south to a little bit of dirt. We have a structure right there above us. We'll be going to here in a second. We've added just a little bit to the map too, by the way. And if you look hard enough, you can see that there really isn't anything uh, north of us. And that's the hard wall. The one where you can't do anything. So, these are triggerable, but obviously there are four. If we go forward, we trigger the false gate. However, we can still get the rocks. And you get to see a mechanic that they intend to have you do later. Which, I like that. I think it's cool. 
we're gonna go ahead and head south. Now, if I had gone north, right here at this gate, it would have actually softlocked us, I think, because we couldn't have actually escaped this pit. So, we're gonna go ahead and explore the southern half. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, what is that? Kinda got my curiosity peaked. So, we have these beasts with, like, military gear. We have more up and down uh, verticality. And we actually cannot go left back into the zone. The wall is there to block us completely. And then, a fight with an invisible character. Never mort. So basically, it it's still basically there. There is a character model, it is moving, it has the AI of an enemy, as it saw us and ran towards us. But it has nothing. Just a filler in name. Nothing quite unique about it, obviously. It is toxic, and you can still hit it with trick and attack it and stuff. So, we do end up winning this battle. But I thought that was kind of amusing to just get attacked by essentially nothing. Anyway, moving on, we had won the battle, and then I finally decided to take the rock back to town. Because guess what? There is a left side of the town you can't access, and that was a first try, which was incredible. So we're going to trigger both of these switches, and the bridge does work. Now, this is the part of the town that is kind of mixed, where, like, he just doesn't say anything, but there is... A uh, collection of NPCs that don't have any dialogue. Huh? Hmm. And now we get into, I think, my favorite discovery of content you're not supposed to access. So while this is playing, I'll go ahead and cover a couple of things. I didn't show well. everything, because this was supposed to be a kind of shorter video pointing out all of the little things that I have found, but I definitely will be doing another video covering a lot of different details. But this is me doing, even though it's cut, essentially, I'm doing all of this stuff in order. So everything I'm doing is with her, but I'm doing everything out of sequence and you'll be able to see the kind of results of that later. So even though she's with us, we haven't done the story correctly. So not only does she despawn, but it only shows one tent. Huh? We go in here in order to progress that part, but when we go back to the map, it actually shows that there's an icon there. So with the key that we kept, that we tried using on the roof, we can open the gate, trigger her, and we get a second time of doing this sequence, which is the beginning of this questline. 
Then, if we hit the trigger that we never hit beforehand, hey. the piston still works, but then we get this sequence where she finally joins us and we get her cassette. Now we go to our quest log. Yeah. That doesn't look right. Alright, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was informative and helpful. That's the main thing. And I will be putting up a couple more videos in the future. Uh, kind of like a short review, and then one that's a long review. So, thanks for watching.